One thing I'm curious about before we get obviously into this amazing sprawling vision, what was your take when you saw Cavill's uh, CGI mustache <laughs> removal? You must have seen that. I mean, I've only I've only seen it in memes. You know, it it was funny because you know I just part of me is happy that we were able to have that not be the total legacy of the hard work that that, yeah. that he and I have done over the last ten years. You know, it, totally. it, it, it's sad to think that that would have been the last view that people had of of Superman was just that whatever totally. that is. Zach, man, congratulations on this. This has been uh, quite the saga, to say the least. Um, yeah. Talk to me a little bit about, well, first, he, he, here's where I want to start. 2017, a movie comes out called Justice League. It has your name on it. <laughs> yeah. How does that make you feel now in retrospect? Did you, did you did you fight that? Did you, did you not want your name on that movie? Because obviously now seeing this, we know how far removed that is from your vision. Um. Did I fight it? Uh, you know, I, I don't know if I even thought about it really to be at that time. I thought about like, did I think about like, should I get my, should I take my name off the movie? Well, uh, I mean, in retrospect, maybe that would have been a thing I could have done, but like, you know, my friends were all in it and my, everyone worked so hard. I just felt like, you know, I never saw it. So maybe if I had seen it, I might have wanted to take my name off it, but I don't, yeah. I never did. So I couldn't, it was hard to care that much. So I've been talking to the cast of your Justice League for, for many years. And the last couple of years, this infamous Snyder Cut has come up frequently, as you can imagine. Momoa talked to me about a year and a half ago. He'd seen something, a version of this. Did, did them talking about it and talking about it so positively in the media? I mean, Momoa was, was right out front. He was saying, yeah, fuck yeah, I want to see this movie. Did that help this as much as the fan movement? help this happen, you think? Oh, I'm sure it certainly did. You know, like the, they volumized the fans message in an incredible way. And they were able to, frankly, they were able to volumize the message, our message of, you know, um, suicide awareness, uh, prevention awareness and, and mental health awareness. You know, so through them and the fans, this great sort of second cause emerged along with the, um, the call to get the movie finished. So, yeah. you know, I think that that, that, yeah, I thank them greatly for, for lending their voices to it, because without them, I'm sure we wouldn't be where we are. I mean, you've you've engendered so much fan love over the years, even prior to these DC movies. I mean, the, you know, the people that love you truly love you, and they live and breathe your vision for, for filmmaking. Um, that being said, this has taken it, as you alluded to, to a whole nother level. I mean, what has struck you, surprised you about um, the power of fandom, the power of fans through this, these last couple of years. Yeah, just, just, you know, being, being able to generate such a, uh, have such a voice, you know, and have such a influential voice. I, I didn't think that they would be able to bring, you know, a big company like, uh, Warner Brothers, Warner Media to the negotiating table, if you will. They, they did, and um, it wouldn't have happened without them. One, uh, one of the many things I think fans are gonna be excited to see in this film is uh, an extended uh, nightmare sequence without revealing too much. This is the part of the, the relatively small amount of material that you shot newly for this, yeah. this film. I'm curious, was the nightmare sequence always part of your vision for this film, or did that come afterwards when you realized, oh, I do have the opportunity to add more to this? It was an element of that world that I'd always thought about. Um, I think famously in BBS, I don't famously, but he has, uh, you know, the Joker card on right. his gun. And that's always brought up a lot of questions about like where he got it and what does it mean? And so, you know, I, I'd always sort of had that idea in the back of my mind, as well as sort of the story, Joker's involvement with um, Robin and right. uh, how those two stories kind of weirdly those two things get to kind of, we get to see a sort of crossroads for those stories in this little scene. And so anyway, my point is only that, um, yeah, the scene was, you know, is consistent and it completes ideas I had about what we might do in the future. Yeah. Um, completes, I guess, begins. Um, right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so the answer is, um, you know, it's 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 original, but it, it, it's, as far in my mind, in my the way I think about the mythology, it's pretty 
it's well-trodden ground to me. You, you had very detailed plans for the next two Justice League films. Did you have titles in mind? God, you know, I'll go look at my books. I probably wrote down, I, probably, I do this for all of you, probably like a page of titles that I tried. Um, but yeah, it probably wasn't gonna be Justice League two and three, that I can tell you. So, I mean, to be honest, after watching this, I feel like all bets are off for the future. I mean, going into this, I was like, this is a miracle that this has happened. But having seen what the fans did to get this to this point, would anything shock you? I mean, I, I, this, this ends on a cliffhanger. This ends on the fans. Your fans are gonna wanna see more of this. You know that. In your mind, if they get galvanize again, what's your attitude about coming back to the so-called Snyderverse? Yeah, um, look, I mean, I, I, I don't know what they would be able to, well, frankly, it, it, there's no telling what they can do because they can do anything, apparently, because this really, it's mo it, let's just put it this way. More, it would it would be in my mind more unlikely for this movie to exist than a, another movie to exist. That is to say, it seems more just from a strategic standpoint weirder to go back and finish a movie that was already released than to make a new one. But I'm glad they did, and uh, that's amazing. So um, you know, I don't know. I mean, look, Warner Brothers, they they they've said, um, and Walter has said, you know, that that this is a kind of a you know a closed loop and it is what it is and, and i and i respect that you know they they consider the theatrical version of justice league canon and that's but that's their prerogative because they you know they're the keys to the ca castle so it is what it is but happy that i was allowed to do this and couldn't be happier because um love the fans and love that they get a little a little bit more of um this trilogy is, is there one sequence in particular? I mean, we're talking four hours of movie, so there's a lot of movie in here for the fans, but is there one that you um, are most excited for the fans to see, to analyze, to pick apart? Oh, wow. There's a few of them, actually. I mean, yes, the sequence that you alluded to at the end in the nightmare sequence, there's a lot of stuff to unpack in that sequence. Even, frankly, just the dark side uh, relationship to um, his underlings and his other the other um members the apocalypians that's always fun to talk about and then frankly uh it'd be interesting to uh, analyze the um the justice league themselves and how they might go forward what's in store also i don't know if you noticed but in the final shot i don't know if this is a spoiler but in the very last shot of the movie it's a wide shot uh a big wide shot if you look at the, the um, Wayne Manor, which is just small in the in the frame, you can see something happening there, which is interesting. Since I don't know when we're gonna get another chance to talk about the, the, your your Snyder verse, I, I, there were a few rumors over the years that I was always curious about. And if you'll indulge yeah. me and tell me if there, there was any truth to any of these, way back yeah. when there was talk of Nightwing of Adam Driver even being cast as a Nightwing. Was Nightwing ever part of your plans? Was Adam Driver ever part of your plans? No, I did, I did talk to Adam Driver about a role, but it wasn't Nightwing. You mentioned the um, Batman being scarred by the, the murder of Robin. Were there concrete plans in the sequels to go back to a flashback to see that? Absolutely, absolutely. That was something I really wanted to do. There was a whole, there was a sequence where uh, in the post top post-apocalyptic world where Batman tells that story and we see it through his eyes. A lot of rumors in recent in recent times of um, Green Lantern being involved. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, even even Ryan Reynolds, Green Lantern. Was that ever even a thought to call up Ryan and see if he would want to were, shoot something? You know, and we can talk about this more later, but there were there there had been a plan and a, and a, I had shot a sequence with Green Lantern and but it's we we felt like um, this was the way not to include it seemed, do you understand? But there's more right. to it. Okay. <laughs> there's always more to it with your stuff. There's always more to it. There, I love what Michael Shannon did as Zod way back when in Man of Steel, but yeah. I'm always intrigued. I heard that you had Daniel Day-Lewis in mind. Was Daniel Day-Lewis someone you ever got to the table on the phone to talk Daniel about that role? I mean, you can talk about Daniel Day-Lewis as an actor and he can play any part he want. Like you could, if Daniel Day-Lewis called you up and said, look, I want to be in a movie. So I'm, yeah. I want to be Lois Lane. <laughs> and you say you can you be like, well, I get, I get, I get okay. okay. It's a it's a take I wasn't prepared for, but yes. <laughs> so yeah. So we always 
<laughs> we did talk. Um, we had hoped Daniel Day Lewis would be interested in the movie, but um, yeah, why not shoot for the moon? I mean, so um, I talked to Joe Manganiello the other day. He's a big yeah. fan of yours, obviously, and we get to see a little bit more of Deathstroke in this one. And I said this, the same thing to him. I said to you, "Is like I have no idea. All bets are off now. I could see a Deathstroke HBO Max series for all I know. I don't know. I mean, the fact is, when you started this, the streaming game was much different." Is there a character, whether you are the showrunner or give it to somebody else, like a character from your Snyderverse, a Martian Manhunter series, a Deathstroke series, is there one that you would be intrigued to see um, in streaming form? I think all those are great ideas. Um, I think Martian Manhunter and uh, Deathstroke are great ideas or this kind of prequel concept where you're back with Batman and his young ward and they're like, you know, just doing what they did for 20 years. Gotham is an interesting thing. I don't know if Ben would want to do that, but there's a lot of, so the, I mean, because it's such a vast canvas, you know, you can poke into it anywhere you want and find yeah. a kind of a small story that would be interesting to tell, you know? I mean, Deathstroke's origin is an amazing place to go and, and look. Are you plugged in at all to like the DC universe plans from this? No. Part, uh, your point? You're, you're not. Mm -hmm. So like, because I'm intrigued, You're, we're gonna see your version of Batman, we're gonna see Ben's Batman mingle apparently with like Burton Universe Batman, presumably yeah. in this flashlight. Like as a as a fan, as someone that has, you know, ha helped create that in some ways, um, what's your perspective on on seeing that? I, I guess from my point of view, I think that that's cool. I mean, I think, I, I, I mean, I don't know what else to say except like, yeah, that's an amazing idea to, you know, the, the butterfly on a wheel concept of uh, time getting, uh, you know, distorted is cool. And I, I'd be interested to see what that means. I mean, I think that in a lot of ways, what we've done is kind of undeniable now, um, as far as like the stamp it's put on the DC world. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, the, you, you mentioned um, early on um, your daughter, Autumn, and you, you have a lovely acknowledgement of her loss in this film, a billboard. Um, highlighting a suicide prevention cause. How did that, when did that uh, uh, occur to you as a, as, a, as, a, as a nice acknowledgement, as a way to kind of spread the good word, even in the context well, the work, of a film like this? Well, the work the fans have done, um, you know, for suicide prevention, frankly, just spread the word as much as possible. Uh, we felt like that was a great thing to do. And then, I, I mean, I don't know if you got to watch the entire end credits, but like, you know, there's a dedication to her, but then that, Alison Crow's Hallelujah is pretty. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty. It's it's pretty intense. So. Well, I, I, the other thing I did want to mention is, I mean, congratulations not only on this. I'm excited to talk to you about uh, Army of the Dead coming up, which seems yeah. like again quintessential Zack Snyder balls to the wall action. Uh, what can I expect out of that one? That one is really just. Um, it's a big exhale, I think, and uh, it's it's an amazing. Um, and fun ride and with a ton of caring and just a lot of style and a lot of beautiful um, zombies that, you know, do stuff you would never expect them to do, which I love. You know me, I like to, I like to, I know the rules, so I like to break them. Everyone was amazing and we all had a great time making it. Really one of the best experiences I've had as a filmmaker. Yeah, well, your Dawn of the Dead is, is a high watermark for me in your, in your career. So I'm excited to see you at least dabble a little bit more in that world. P people are always curious, you know, the Marvel, your perspective on Marvel. I mean, you're a fan of all of it. I, I know of the comics. Of so could you imagine, like, do you have a relationship with Kevin Feige? Have you guys ever even loosely talked about you I've, getting uh, involved? I've, I've never met uh, Incredible work he's done, um, insanely beautiful. You know, and they've run the gamut. I mean, let's be honest, they've done, they put their toes in every possible um, genre. They've played with their characters in in now I think in even more experimental ways. You know, than you know, than they they they're secure enough to then yeah. they can take not, chances now. Yep, not playing defense, you know, anymore, which I think is pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, WandaVision, I mean, the, when you see yeah. kind of like the subversive kind of bizarre yeah. tropes that they're playing with, that's that's a cool space to be in. Yeah, it's really good, it's 100% great. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I'm, I, you know, I'm sure fans would wonder, like, yeah, if Kevin Feige calls you up and says, like, hey, you want to give a stab at, at, at Wolverine? 
I mean, I think the fans would be interested into, into that, into Zack Snyder's Wolverine. That's interesting. That's a, that's a phone call worth taking, right? From your lips to God's ears. <laughs> I mean, the other aspect, and I'll let you go in a second, but the other aspect, like, from a filmmaking perspective that I'm fascinated by is this like ironically ended up with the most creative freedom of your career out of this horrendous situation. Like you've now yeah. ended up with like this film that is just like, und I've described this to others, like this is like Zack Snyder being like pumped into your veins. This is just like undiluted Zack Snyder. What do you, th I mean, your perspective on like, since the Snyder cut has come into, into existence, there's talk of all these other cuts, of the air cut, of these other filmmakers getting opportunities. Um, do you think that filmmakers need to be kind of given a little bit more respect and a little bit more right to, to deliver their vision? Listen, I mean, yes, I think, yeah, a hundred percent. But you know, it's a hard, it's hard, it's business. And you know, it's 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 in the end, you know, they own the thing. You sign a contract, you know, yeah. but there is an agreement. You know, there's an agreement that you make with them as far as like, I'll give you the best I have. I'll do. You're hiring me for a reason because I I do this thing. You know, if a computer could do it, I'm sure you wouldn't hire me. Um, but like, you know what I mean. So, I think that that in that way, it, it's it's always important to respect. Um, the talent that you you that you get you know and, and these filmmakers are gifted and you know i would hope i would love to see these other um films you know get the director's cuts that their filmmakers want because yeah. from the director's cut it's very it's hard to imagine that you'd lose money you know from it you know because like you know there's a lot of my movies for instance um i forget the actual like the the special edition of bbs like my director's cut of bbs which at the time they wouldn't let me call a director's cut because they didn't want people to think that the theatrical version wasn't my version right but like that that version of the movie drove i think like 75 percent of the dvd purchases of the movie which was a thing that wouldn't exist unless i said hey guys let's make this do this version of the movie and so, not to mention it's like re a re-evaluation of the movie i feel like if it's only grown in esteem thanks to that cut of the film, frankly, in the 100%. eyes of fans. 100%, yeah. like you can't, I mean, look, you can do what you can feel any way you want about about BBS, of course, because it is what it is, a movie. Yeah. But I think in retrospect, that movie has gained a huge following, a massive cult. I, like, I can tell you, like, if you don't think that, and a lot of people would say, that's not true. Trust me, I see it every day. Like I wouldn't have, you know, like, uh, this movie wouldn't exist unless that movie had the following that it does. 